The well in the palace grounds was the very well in which lived the enchanted frog prince. One day it happened that the princess was playing with a golden ball near to the well. She threw it high in the air, but she could not catch it, and it bounced on the stones and fell with a splash into the water. Meanwhile, what had become of Prince Pipsqueak? If you remember, we left him at the exact moment that he got turned into a frog and cast into the very same Snow White musical magical wishing well that we've just been talking about. We should now spend a bit of time with him and see how he's coping. I mean, you'll be wanting to know things like, like, did it hurt? Well, no, it didn't. As transformations go, it was flawless. In all, Pipsqueak didn't feel a thing. I mean, he sat up and <coughs> spat a bit of mud out of his mouth and rubbed his eyes, and his first thought was that he'd fallen into the moat. Oh, great Scott, thought Pipsqueak. I must have fallen into the moat. Oh, how did that happen? And he peered around, and somehow it didn't seem like the moat. There was too much mud, and the water was too dirty, and everything seemed unusually large. It was almost as though he had shrunk. Huh. Funny, thought Pipsqueak. I don't remember the moat being this filthy. And if I'm indeed underwater, how come I can breathe? <gasps> and, oh my golly, what are all these enormous broken toys doing here? Indeed, he appeared to be in some sort of underwater toys graveyard. The toys, however, were huge. Vast pink doll's legs stuck up in sinister fashion from the mud. A whacking great plastic sewing machine towered above him. And nearby, there was a pile of torn, gigantic comics and a huge, leering, one-eyed teddy bear with the stuffing coming out. Oh, I, I, I must be dreaming, thought Pipsqueak. Oh, that's it. I'm in the middle of a terrible nightmare and Grovel will wake me up at any minute. Oh. And that was when he received the next shock. Something cold, wet and webbed tapped him on the back. Pipsqueak whirled around and found himself face to face with three toads who were bigger than he was. Here they are, Urk, Arkle and Grimmy. Life, as you can imagine, was rather uneventful for Urk, Arkle and Grimmy. And they were quite surprised to see a strange frog suddenly appear from nowhere. Much to their surprise, the strange frog burst into loud laughter. It was rather forced laughter all the same. Ah ha 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 ha! Laughed Pipsqueak, shaking his head. Ah ha 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 ha! I say, what a dream this is! Life-sized toads, eh? Ah ha ha! Whatever next, though, go on, clear off. Being a prince, Pipsqueak, as we know, was used to giving orders. Didn't you hear me? Get out of my dream this instant! Is he talking to us? Asked Urk. Well, he must be, said Arkle. Yep. I can't say I like his tone of voice. Get lost! Arkle then hopped up, stretched out a webbed hand, and grabbed him around the neck, hard. No dream, froggy boy, said Arkle. Ouch! yelped Pipsqueak. That hurts! <laughs> what do you mean, froggy boy? How dare you speak to me like that? Don't you know who I am? I am the prince, and... He didn't get any further. Urk? Arkle and Grummit had thrown back their horny heads and were splitting their sides. Ha 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 ha! Did you hear that? You hear what he said? <laughs> you hear what he said? He said he was a prince. Ha ha ha! What a joke! <laughs> and that was when Prince Pipsqueak looked down at himself for the first time. <gasps> oh no! Horrors! He was a frog. A small, cold, green slimy frog. The terrible truth suddenly dawned on him. The old woman. Of course. She must have cast a spell on him. All right, said Pipsqueak. Look, all right. You can stop laughing. But Urk, Arkle and Grummit had vanished. There was a moment's silence and then <gasps> kasplash! The noise was ear splitting and it came from directly above Pipsqueak's head. Luckily, his brand new frog reflexes came to his aid, and he hurled himself hastily to one side. Kerslop! The missile landed where his webbed foot had been. Urk, Arkle, and Grummit emerged from their hiding place, huge, delighted grins on their faces. <laughs> I say, you snakes, you could have warned me, complained Pipsqueak bitterly. Yeah, well, that'll be her up top again, sniffed Grummit. Who? asked Pipsqueak. Who are you talking about? Who do you think? Her uh, Royal Iron Mighty, Princess Petulant, of course. 
Princess? Did, did, did you say Princess Petulant? I'm saved. One of my own kind. What luck. And with a strong kick of his back legs, Pipsqueak shot up through the water. Steep, moss-covered walls rose high all around him. An old pail dangled from a frayed rope. And far, far above was a small circle of blue sky. Hello there, called Pipsqueak, his voice echoing strangely. Mayday! Mayday! Wait, Wait right there! I'm, I'm coming, coming up, up the loop! As the golden ball sunk far out of sight, the princess began to cry bitterly. As she wept, a voice called out, Don't cry, princess. And looking up, she saw an ugly frog stretching its head out of the water. Rubbish. In fact, Petulant didn't cry. What she did was she had a temper tantrum. And she made such a racket that she didn't even notice the small, green, anxious-looking frog with the tiny crown on its head that dragged itself up the rope and scrambled, gasping, onto the wall. I say, he shouted above the howls, I say, Princess Petulant. Who's that? she said. Who spoke? Me, over here, on the wall. Ugh, yuck! said Petulant, spotting him. Oh, a yucky frog! Yuck! Go away! Oh, oh but, but, but you're wrong, explained the Pipsqueak eagerly. Look, I, I, I know I look like a frog, but in actual fact, I'm Prince Pipsqueak from the next door kingdom. Oh, pull the other leg, it's got webs on, said Petulant rudely. No, but it's true, I am! Look, I've got a crown! So what, said Petulant, I've got hundreds. Anyway, I don't believe a word of it. And what's more, I don't like your tone of voice. Oh, for goodness sake, you must help me try and contact my parents. Who says I must, said Petulant. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, though. Pop down the well and bring my ball up, and uh, I might think about it. Being a prince, Pipsqueak wasn't used to taking orders. I'm not going back down there again, he said stiffly, not for all the flies on a cowpat. Oh, no, listen to me. I'm even beginning to talk like a frog now. <sighs> well, then, stay a frog forever, said Petulant with a shrug. Why should I care? Good bye. No, wait, wait. <sighs> all right, I'll get it. If I get your firm promise as a royal princess that you'll help me. Well, he shouldn't have trusted her, of course. But... Petulant drove a hard bargain, and there was nothing else for it but to fetch the golden ball. Pipsqueak shinned down the rope. <laughs> Any luck then, your royal highness? <laughs> Asked Grummet. Well, yes, if you must know, snapped Pipsqueak. We royals stick together, and that's why we live in palaces and you live down wells. The princess has assured me of her assistance, so, so, well, Yabu sucks to you. I'm just getting the ball. Crawler, said Irk. You won't get any thanks for it, agreed Arkle. You expect help from her up there? She don't know the meaning of the word. Look, just mind your own business, snarled Pipsqueak. But he hopped over to the ball and began to uh, wrestle it uh, out of the mud. Uh, Irk, Arkle and Grummet jeered and <laughs> blew raspberries. But Pipsqueak ignored them and kicked off. <laughs> Have you got it? Petulant called down. Her voice boomed eerily against the walls. Yes, yes, I've got it. I'm coming up. For the second time, Pipsqueak began to ascend the rope. There, he gasped. Satisfied? There's your silly old ball. Now kindly get me out of here. Oh, gracious, is that the time, said Petulant, snatching the ball from his webbed hands. I thought I heard the dinner gong. Must go, and off she ran. Just like that. Pip Squeak was flabbergasted. <sighs> Later that day, as the princess sat with the king, something came flopping up the great staircase. Flip, flap, flop. <sighs> Look, King Prosperous and Princess Petulant were just starting their supper when Pip Squeak appeared. If only he'd been taller, it would have been quite a dramatic moment. He would have thrown open the door and strode in, but, however, being only a few inches high, he crept round it and fell over the doormat. <coughs> I say, said Pipsqueak from the doorway, haven't you forgotten something, Princess Petulant? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, darling, 
said King Prosperous. There appears to be a talking frog in the room. I'm not sure I like its tone of voice. Is it a friend of yours? What? said Petulant. Oh, that, oh, no. Certainly not. It's just Pipsqueak, you know, the prince from that poor family who run that tacky little kingdom next door. Just ignore him, Daddy. Sneak! shrieked Pipsqueak. Traitor! Trickster! Sir, I accuse your daughter of treachery. To think I trusted her. Then, in a low voice, King Prosperous said, Honey Bunny, I do wish you'd be more careful about your little playmates. <laughs> huh! said Pipsqueak bitterly, flapping relentlessly onto the table. I was good enough to get the ball, though, wasn't I? Hey? Uh, what ball is he talking about, Cherry Pie? asked King Prosperous. Oh, does it really matter? The golden ball you gave me this morning, it went down the well and the frog brought it up again, that's all. Big deal. Yes! And in return, she promised to help me, accused Pipsqueak. What about your slogan, King Prosperous? My word is my bond. Ha! Huh, don't make me laugh. Anyway, I know when I'm not wanted, I shall find my own way home. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, King Prosperous, I'm telling. <laughs> I'm going to spread it around that your rotten daughter can't keep her word. Yeah, you wait till the town criers get a hold of this. You'll be exposed for fraud. And let's see what the voters have to say about that. Aha! Now then, now then, don't let's be hasty. King Prosperous turned quite pale. He could just imagine the headlines. Sensation! Top king exposed by frog. Sources revealed today that... King, my word is my bond, prosperous, hot favourite in the race for the Emperorship, is being sued for breach of promise by a frog, claiming to be Prince Pipsqueak Jr., son of King Pipsqueak Sr. It didn't sound good. It certainly wouldn't put him in a good light with the voters. Whereas, sensation, top king rescues frog, would. In fact, it wouldn't do him any harm at all. Uh, uh, Prince Pipsqueak has a point, daughter. <laughs> One good turn deserves another. Uh, petulant, uh, draw up a chair for our guest. Uh, but, Dad, do as I say. <laughs> Pipsqueak, is there anything you particularly fancy, my dear little fro uh, fro uh, f uh, friend? <laughs> but Pipsqueak, worn out by his terrifying ordeal, had keeled over into the salad bowl and was fast asleep. Right. I think he could be cleared away now, petulant, said King Prosperous coldly. Take him to the bathroom and make him comfortable there. Sling him in the sink. But, Dad, no arguments! Do you realise this could cost me the Emperorship? Perhaps that will make you think twice about making rash promises to frogs in future. Right, uh, I must send a messenger to the, uh, to the frog's parents and uh, order the bells to be rung and reporters to be present and so on. And well, off you go, and remember, be nice to him. Hmm? Bo, 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 bo. More frog prints tomorrow. Um, yeah. Love this. <laughs>